Allora, Tane congiosum capsu drone a carcio resin, da congiosum capsu drone a semi di mare congiosum capsu drone a lapcia laia, ansagi, lapcia della giangures, di magiana, non ma sono due, tu hai la tatu mares, congiosum che è, e non ti ho lapcia la giangures, e così ti ho scritto anzi. Good evening. Last week we continued to look at the presentation on, on refuge. We spoke about that in order to give to give rise to actual uh, uh, the mind of refuge, or to use a synonym here for refuge, a mind uh, of desiring protection or assistance, or, or uh, yeah, de- uh, protection or assistance, one first reflects on the sufferings of psychic existence, giving rise to this a sincere wish to be freed from suffering and pain. And that's the first cause, and the second is then is, is, is having the, uh, a sincere confidence that the, the, the three jewels have the ability to um, uh, uh, guide one so that one can attain a state of protection within oneself. In other words, freedom from suffering, protection from suffering, which is freedom from suffering. So when these two causes come together, and what then one is, is able to go to refuge to the three jewels with sincerity from the depths of one's heart, So we looked at that uh, last week, and we also then looked at the um, precepts of refuge. And um, whilst looking at the precepts of refuge, this was done in the context of the understanding that in order for one's precept, uh, in order for one's refuge to have great meaning and to achieve its purpose, then one needs to to achieve or fulfill these precepts, to act in accordance with the, the precepts of refuge. The precepts we saw were divided into two, uh, two types. Those which are the precepts of what is to be uh, stopped, what is to be ceased, and then those precepts which are to be accomplished, what is to be accomplished, as opposed to what is to be ceased. And Delay the, the two uh, trainings or precepts associated with the, the Buddha jewel uh, are the first one, which is that um, act which is to be accomplished, that precept to accomplish, to engage in, is that 
what the refuge precept to accomplish is that one commits to receiving teachings from the Buddha, uh, many teachings from the Buddha, and reflecting on those. So listening and reflecting. That is the activity that needs to be accomplished in the terms of our refuge pre- uh, precept. And the refuge precept um, in relation to what must be uh, turned away from is one shouldn't go for refuge or to turn towards for protection uh, with a mind of, 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 of trust to worldly gods. Because these, these worldly gods, whilst they have some ability and some power, they don't have the uh, ability to guide us to a state of liberation. And therefore, if we turn to them for refuge, this will harm our refuge in the Buddha, and therefore our, our training in the minds of the Buddha Dharma will not go well. Mm-hmm. And a further refuge precept that is to be accomplished is the way that we should relate to um, images of the Buddha, such as statues and so forth. We should relate to them with, um, with a mind of deep respect seeing them as a, um, as, as a, 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 a represent, re- representation of, an actual, of the actual Buddha. Mm-hmm. The second of the three jewels, the Dharma jewel, the trainings that relate to that, the activity that one commits to to uh, ceasing is engaging in any kind of act that brings harm to sentient beings. So that is what must be abandoned. And the, the, the accompanying a refuge precept that needs to be accomplished is to guard our uh, ethical conduct of our physical activities, verbal activities, and method, uh, mental activities. So in other words, guarding our ethics of our body, speech, and mind. That is the precept to be accomplished. And the precept relating to what we, that we should abandon is, is um, any contrary activity, uh, contrary to the ethical conduct. In other words, activities with body, speech, and mind that bring harm to sentient beings. The further um, precept to be accomplished is that um, any, any uh, uh, Dharma words, Dharma uh, texts should, should um, be again treated with, with care and with reference. And then the third jewel, the Sangha jewel, the, the precept there that one needs to, um, uh, 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 the precept relating to, to activities that we must cease, that we must abandon, is um, closely associating or risk, uh, 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 through close association, risk being influenced by those whose way of thinking, way of, of acting is, is contrary to the Dharma and therefore, <coughs> and therefore say, can have a negative impact on our Dharma practice. And the activity, the, the precept that um, relates to the activity to be accomplished is that one should follow the, um, the example 
be influenced by, follow the example of those senior practitioners which are counted amongst the Sangha Jewel. And like them, not only should one uh, receive many teachings and reflect on those teachings as has already been um, committed to, but one also needs to engage in meditation on them. So therefore, all, he has the third of those three activities of hearing, reflecting and meditating. These all need to be accomplished as part of the varying refuge precepts. And the pre, pre, uh, further precept then relating to um, what must be accomplished is the way that one should relate to uh, saffron or maroon cloth should again be with, uh, with res- great respect. This final precept may sound a little strange because the, the color of, of saffron or mar- uh, maroon or maroon is worn by many people, not just Buddhists, also non-Buddhists. Um, it's worn by people who are, are uh, ethical and virtuous, as well as those who are, who are not ethical and, and act in a non-virtuous way. So this precept may sound a little strange. <laughs> If one takes a rather literal interpretation of, of what we're seeing here in the text, then it, it implies that one should show great respect to someone who wears saffron or, or maroon, even if they are, are engaging in, in killing or stealing or other very um, evident non-virtuous acts. So that would of course be, be ludicrous. Rather, the, the respect that, that is to be shown is towards the uh, saffron and maroon clo- robes that uh, were worn uh, by, by, by the Buddha. And therefore, when we see the color, it's, it will be very useful to remind ourselves of that. That just seeing the color, remind ourselves that that was the color of the robes that, that Buddha Shakyamuni himself wore. And just recalling Buddha Shakyamuni like that w- w- should result in, in um, a mind of faith, a mind of, 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 a mind of faith immediately arising uh, through merely recalling the Buddha. And in that way, we show respect to the, actually to the, to the Buddha. Yeah, <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And similarly, it's appropriate to, um, to, to show respect to, to those who are ordained and wear the, the um, uh, saffron or maroon robes of the ordained. So whilst one has no idea, of course, of, as what inequalities the ordained have achieved, so therefore one, it's appropriate to show respect because they may well have achieved uh, some great inequalities. Well, Nimada, Tawata, Shinda, Denela Caps to Ayurva, Tinichiba Chagua, Sanjo Sanjuku, Dogu, Sesha, Yuku, Dilayan, Pechik, Sach, and Pediava, Yukubachene, then Nimadawa Caps to Ada, and the Chiri Pinch, then a Hawanchuda, and this is like Capsuva, the Chiba Chagua, and be Dingy Rada. Cousin Dilayan, one should also buy the enemy on a Nuba Yuti again, to two Yuti again, Robach and a Chi, two Yuti, Nuba Yur Tele, and possible here uh, now furthermore it's possible when we, we, that one may have a doubt thinking earlier we heard that one should show great respect uh, towards uh, statues um, or, or physical representations of the Buddha and we should not allow, uh, we should not concentrate on the material, the craftsmanship, but rather we should have a, a generate a mind of, of faith through seeing this as, as a basis, as a represent this basis, as a representation of the Buddha. Allow faith and reverence for the Buddha to arise and for all that the, the Buddha um, achieved and has done. But one then may also think, how does this differ from how um, some other re uh, religious traditions where they, they worship the sun and the moon and, and various gods, believing that they have great power and ability to provide protection and benefit. So is there not some relationship between um, idolatry and then what is being uh, presented here? <laughs> Kunda Horong, Gibje Digi, some some tire marriage. Tell them the Nigu Gibje Garu Seven, the Nigu Kudelia, to get Sanje Jumden Digi, Yeshiba said it. The Shu Yore, some chicken. Sanje Jumden Digi, Dinadida, Shu Yobaro, Chiman to get Yeshiba Shu Yore, Chesa Sanje Jilapina Yore, Chesan Dinenza, Delia, and Kudiba, Jayon Dinba, Sanje, 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 Jambi Tone, and Kudil Deva Chere. Bene Az Dura, Tarn Bodhi Dion du, and the Sosugi, Punja in Nada, Bui Nada, Parra Tayon du, and the Parra Tayon du, Padilla, Betik Kawaki, Shago Marva, the Parra Tayon du, Padilla Dine, Rangi Pami Parra Tayon du, Rangi Amadi Tienje, Amadi Tempi Tempa de Caso Gia Chago Mother, Amma Madonna, Parra Tayon, Padilla Caso Shasha Shayo Marva, and the Anzu Parra Tayon du, Padi Ginje, Anzu Amalia. Be Kumajadanga Sometimes 
Tenige samtawe kwenye tepa kye kukwole tangazwa. The way in the Buddhist tradition that we, we uh, should relate to uh, uh, statues of, of Buddhas is that we should ensure firstly, as has been mentioned, that we, uh, we shouldn't allow our mind to be distracted by the, for example, the uh, ma- material from which the, the statue is created. So whether it's made from stone or wood or gold, that is not um, um, from the side of the, 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 the observer. That is not primary at all. Rather, we should remind ourselves that th- through the, the, um, the, the process of the statue having been cons- consecrated, now the omniscient consciousness of the Buddha abides within the statue. And it's that process that, has, that makes uh, what otherwise would be a mere image of the Buddha a, a suitable receptacle or uh, representative of the Buddha. And this can perhaps be likened if um, a, a body of a living being, a human or an animal, what makes it a, li- a living being is not the presence of body, but of consciousness within that body. So similarly, a consecrated statue is, 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 should be related to as being pervaded by the exalted omniscient consciousness of the Buddha. And therefore, when we, re- uh, when we, when we see a, a, an image of the Buddha, we should relate to it as if this were the physical Buddha before us. And if we do relate to it in that way, then uh, very readily faith and respect will arise within us. And another way that we can, can look at this is a Buddha image in a modern context serves a similar person, uh, a similar uh, p- um, um, purpose as um, uh, our photographs. So if we look at a pho- photograph of a, a, long, a long deceased or very distant, or a, a relative, a very loved relative that lives far away and we don't see often, and we see their photograph, immediately joy will arise. If we see perhaps our loved mother, um, we will immediately recall her and joy will arise within us. So here the, the, the Buddha image should fulfill a similar pur- a purpose, recognizing that through the process of consecration, that the um, enlightened consciousness abides there. And now this, this, this uh, Buddha image serves the purpose as um, to give rise, uh, to generate a great uh, a, a trust and faith through recalling all the qualities of, of, of the Buddha. So that is the way to relate to images of, of the Buddha. And that's quite different from um, I, uh, the practice of idolatry. Mm. This is um, where we came to last week, so now returning to the text and looking at something new. Uh, we start right at the bottom of page 22, the fourth, uh, fourth uh, bullet point. Also, understanding that all temporary and ultimate happiness is a result of the kindness of the three jewels, offer your food and drink to them at every meal and rely upon them rather than upon shamans or fortune tellers for all of your immediate and ultimate needs. So this is a practice of refuge that having generated refuge one has a great appreciation for the three jewels. And this appreciation here is, 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 is expressed as we see in this uh, fourth point that recognizing all that we, that, that we have, all the, as we have here, the, the um, temporary and ultimate happiness or our spiritual and temporal happiness, 
all comes about due to the kindness of the three jewels, then uh, naturally one will offer the first of all that we have, the best part of what we have, to the three jewels. What is being expressed here is the understanding that all our the, the, the happiness that we are experiencing, such as whether it's our inner happiness or our comfortable and pleasant um, outer circumstances, all that we, that we are experiencing now, as well as the causes that we have accumulated, which will result in our f- uh, future happiness. This all comes about in dependence on the, on, on the kindness of the three jewels. So that is the understanding here, that the uh, results of happiness, the results of virtue that we are experiencing now as happiness, as well as the causes of our future happiness that we have accumulated, this all has come down to the ki- due to the kindness of the three jewels. It's quite possible you hear this and think, hang on, I'm happy because I've actually done some great things and I'm feeling pretty good, or some nice things have happened to me and I'm feeling pretty good, and um, my outer circumstances are really comfortable and pleasant because, well, I worked really hard and I (laughs) I earned the money with which I could buy and, and acquire all these good outer conditions. So... Why am I supposed to be uh, grateful towards the kindness of the three jewels here when it's my hard work that has, has resulted in all that um, is good that I'm currently experiencing? Mm. Well, this is actually how it seems, if we don't think deeply. If we don't think deeply, it seems that all that we have is good is due to our endeavors, whether it's our uh, uh, inner happiness and our outer comfort, all due to ourselves. But it's only like this if we don't think very deeply. Mm. Tendela, Demolum 
Rangi Lamachi, Lamitis and the Church, Sum Sungora Takan or Seva Congo, Chimbin Yaman Jewels, the Nigger soon be a turbalatine, digging Yamanje, digging Yamanjevatine, Manzu Kiawadilia, Milkiawale, Manzu Longe Yawa, the Tuni Yawajadi, Manzu Denichine, Yomari, digging Yawale. Says that the Nigim, the Nigging Yamanjegi, that the Sum Sunata, Seva Comia, Chimbin Yaman Jewel said, Lapped in the Sujos, Tembasan Yamni Digiabare. Just and Gasmodi, <laughs> So certainly, if we, if we look at all that is, is good in our life that, we, that we've achieved, then we can say, yes, I've achieved this through um, endeavors that we have in, engaged in. We didn't sit back and, and um, have what we have. So we did uh, um, engage in a lot of um, energy and activity. But what we are experiencing in this life, the results that we are experiencing in this life, they've come about in dependence and a vast array of causes, primarily what we're experiencing in this life has come about independent on the causes that we accumulated in our past lives. So that is where we, we should look. And so whilst in, in, in our former lives, in this, uh, uh, this continuum, we engaged in, in activity, so we certainly did something. But what was it? What was it that we did? So we're all sitting here as human beings, and not just human beings, we have a, a, a precious human rebirth. This precious human rebirth was achieved in dependence on the causes we accumulated in our past lives in particular. We guarded our ethical conduct of our body, speech, and mind very well. So we created those causes in our past life that has given us this rebirth, this rebirth that we've used to um, achieve some, um, some men a mental happiness and material comfort. But that mental happiness and material comfort that we've achieved in this human rebirth has also come about in dependence on causes from our past lives. Our material comfort has come about in dependence on our practices of generosity in our past lives. Furthermore, in our past lives, we've uh, practiced not just ethical conduct and, and, and generosity, but we've also practiced uh, patience. And therefore, we uh, ex uh, experience a ripening result of having harmonious relationships with, with others and having complete uh, sense faculties and so forth. And moreover, in our past lives, we practiced uh, joyous perseverance, and thereby, in this life, we have as, um, uh, a great interest in spiritual development. We make um, the effort we do in our spiritual training, and we have a, 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 a natural inclination towards virtue. So this, these qualities in this life have come about in dependence on causes from our, that we ourselves created in our past life. So this is the first point to look at, but still the doubt may remain, okay, sure, may, may remain, sure that what I have in this life isn't then just from my endeavors in this life, but also from what I did in my past lives. So therefore, it's still all down to me. <laughs> so we look a little further. Our practice of ethics, generosity, patience, joyous perseverance, and so forth, these came about independent on guidance we had of others, training we had of others. These weren't all our, our own bright ideas. 
We were guided by others and almost certainly guided by uh, uh, spiritual teachers in our past lives. Hence, we have this, uh, these ripening results that we do in this particular context. And when we then include that, that we would have been trained in what is ethics, how to accomplish ethics, how to turn away from unethical behavior, identify and not turn away from it, what is generosity, patience, and joy's perseverance, and how to accomplish it, how to turn away from its contrary practices. We then can see we relied on someone skilled. And that someone who was skilled would have relied on, on their own lineage of teachers, and these would have related back to the, the great masters of the past, such as Nagarjuna and Asanga and Atisha and many others. So here now we, we, we're hearing about the Sangha Jewel. And the Sangha Jewel, these great accomplished practitioners of the past, our spiritual teachers and others, would trace their lineage back, of course, to the Buddha Jewel, the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni himself. And they would have guided us in dependence on their realizations and their continuum, the Dharma Jewel. So when you reflect on, then on the meaning of this fourth point here, we see why we should have an innate, uh, a deep felt appreciation for the Buddha jewel, for the Dharma jewel, and the Sangha jewel, because it is in dependence on, on, on their kindness that we have achieved the, the we, that we acu- accomplish the causes that have led to the results that we are experiencing now, as well as accumulating the causes for future happy results. <coughs> Non <laughs> Lambdenna, <laughs> Jahari <laughs> Dissociate 
Then Answer <laughs> The f uh, further way that we can relate to the meaning that's ex expressed here, that that all temporal ultimate happiness comes from the kindness of the of the three jewels, is we think of our situation that we have here. So many of you have been coming to the Dharma Center for quite some years, some for some months, some are new, but all of you, even if this is your very first time here are accumulating great stores of, of, of merit, of positive karma in what your activities here in the Dharma Center, whether this is the first teaching you've been receiving or whether you've been volunteering and receiving teachings and, and, and uh, partaking in retreats for, for many years. So the, at this place, is a Tisha Buddha Center is a, uh, is, a, 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 is a place where tremendous amounts of merit, of good karma is created. And the only reason why we are able to do so right here is because of the, the great qualities of, of Lama Yeshi and Lama Zopa Rinpoche. Their inc incredible inner qualities, their love, their compassion, their, 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 their wisdom, their, their flawless wisdom. So it's independent on their great skills and the influence that they had on, 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 on their students that we I have this opportunity here to accumulate merit, the results of which, in some future life, we will experience. So similarly, we can take this, this way of thinking then, that what we are experiencing here is due to the kindness of those who support the center, and this is all possible because of the, the founders of the center, Lama Yeshe and Lama Zopa Rinpoche, but that they were able to do so that they were able to, to interact with uh, uh, Westerners and, 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 and um, help so many beings and encourage them to, to uh, create Dharma centers around the world in order to benefit others. They could only engage with Westerners because of the inc incomparable wisdom and, and compassion of His Holiness. Because it's through His Holiness, leaving Tibet, fleeing Tibet, that the Buddha Dharma was able to flourish first in, in the Himalayan in North India, and then throughout, uh, 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 elsewhere in India, and then spread through, throughout the world. And then for His Holiness, the, 14th, the present 14th Dalai Lama, to be in, in the position of, of, of temporal and spiritual leadership in Tibet, those two came about in dependence on many causes. There's a, a, a great lineage of incredibly accomplished and realized uh, uh, masters, great teachers and, and yogis, as well as their supporting community, the entire society supporting that, that practice of the Buddha Dharma, the, the deep and profound practice of the Buddha Dharma over a, a, more than a, a period of more than a thousand years. So this was a vast array of causes, this, this, yeah, this continuity of causes that enabled what we have here to come about. And of course, it goes much further back than just the situation in Tibet. There was a, a bridge had to be created between uh, 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 Tibet and, and India to, in order to bring the Buddha Dharma across. And there, one reflects on the, the great kindness of the uh, uh, translators who endured unimaginable hardships walking from the land of snows into the, the hot plains of, of North India learning a, a, a language which is completely unknown to them, studying the, the, the philosophy of the Buddha Dharma 
and, the, and all its vast and profound aspects, and then creating and translating it back into, into um, uh, Tibetan. So this was an incredible uh, uh, an endeavor that they embarked on, and many of them died and certainly uh, experienced great hardships. So there we can think even further back to kindness of others. And then for Nalanda Monastery to have been what it was at that time, this it was only such a great monastic seat, a seat of, of tremendous learning and holding the Mahayana Dharma because of all the accomplished practitioners that they had had, such as Nagarjuna and many others, who were sustained by their vast monastic community, were supported by, their, by the greater community as well. And all of this then gets traced back to Buddha Shakyamuni himself. So we see from Buddha Shakyamuni himself this lineage traveling all the way up to today that has enabled us to sit here tonight. But it didn't just start with Buddha Shakyamuni's enlightenment. The being that was to be in, uh, attain enlightenment as uh, the Buddha Shakyamuni, he trained for countless eons, motivated by his, his mind of bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment, where he was striving to become a Buddha for the sake of each and every sentient being, such as all of us. So therefore, the Buddha endured countless hardships for eon after eon after eon, all for our sake. And we see this expressed through this lineage that came through his endeavors as an ordinary bodhisattva and eventually an Arya bodhisattva and later as a Buddha. And then through the lineage of practitioners right through to this present day. So when you think like this, we can see that there really is no one who's kinder than Buddha Shakyamuni. And all the virtue that we are experiencing, all the goodness and happiness that we are experiencing now and we will experience in the future, in this way we can see how it traces back to Buddha Shakyamuni himself. <laughs> When you think like, like that, immediately a great ap ap appreciation for Buddha Shakyamuni, the Buddha Jewel, all the, the holy practitioners, which are, which are, are the, the Sangha Jewel, and what they have on their continuum, namely the Dharma Jewel. So like this, tremendous appreciation of the kindness of the three jewels naturally will arise within us. And under the influence of this appreciation of the kindness, readily one will make offerings with us of water bowls, flowers, incense, or, or food and drink. And in this way, we uh, 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 keep this precept that is an activity to be accomplished. <coughs> And from this presentation, hopefully it's, one can see the great benefit that comes on reflecting on the kindness of others. If one reflects on the kindness of others, and particularly in this case, where we're talking about the Lama and the, the Buddha jewel, the Sangha jewel and, and the, the Dharma jewel that they all contain, immediately great trust in them, faith in them arises. And this is a mind of virtue accumulating a strong merit. On the other hand, if you don't engage in reflection on the kindness of others, We'll think all that we have achieved is because of our own brilliance. And it's quite likely that some pride and arrogance will arise, thinking that 
look at all this that I've achieved, all my inequalities, or everything that's around me that's, that's also so, so, such um, these great achievements, aren't I something special? So that shows the great benefit that comes on reflecting on the kindness of others and the danger of not doing so. ね、なぜ and looking at the second part of point four, um, turning over the page, and to rely upon them rather than upon shamans or fortune tellers for all of your immediate and ultimate needs. So just to say in the translation, the, there's one Tibetan term which better translates as um, uh, shamans or fortune tellers. So that's a better translation. Um, so the meaning of, of, of the second part here is that we should, as we have been hearing up to this point, we should turn with, with trust, with a mind of trust in the Lama and the Three Jewels for, um, to overcome all our problems, whether it's illness or whether it's to achieve all that's good, such as temporary happiness of a good rebirth or, or ultimate happiness of, of uh, liberation or enlightenment. We should turn towards the Lama and the Three Jewels, not towards those such, such as shamans and fortune tellers who lack trust or faith in the three jewels. So that second point, who lack faith in the three jewels, is a key component so as to understand the meaning here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, here, where there, there are many places one can find shamans or fortune tellers, those who, um, who, who, who perhaps have some, who, uh, who, who uh, have some, I don't know, ritual practice, or they, they uh, converse with uh, 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 spirits or with, with gods. So here what we are guarded against is to have faith that they present a path to happiness, that they present a technique to abandon suffering. This is what we need to guard ourselves against. This would be contrary to our refuge if we were to believe that um, uh, following the, uh, turning towards such a person, seeking a path of protection, of a path of refuge, is, 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 um, is the correct way to go. That would of course be contrary to our refuge because it would harm our refuge. <laughs> Yang 
ကျမ်းတွေလာဖြစ်နိုင်ခဲ့ခြေတယ်ဆိုရင်ကျမ်းတွေလာဖြစ်နိုင်ခဲ့ဒီရှိကြဆင်းချေချိုးမှာတယ
Nama Kronos in Nubedig, Sumalia, Nanaz Masona, that Nanaz Yakap Pumba Shisho Dina, Koran Wall and Lumbo, Yoro, you Lumbo, Pene, Lumbo, or Disolia, Koran Lame Koran, Wangi Tone, Kona Dijitio or a Dirobachi or a Dilatici or Sma, Gui Tonala, Beja Tayagi, Gejo to Vialia, and Beja Pando to Biagi Tonala, Lamigi. Nibi Tone, Lame Sumati at the Wallace, Lame Sumati at the Dismiti at the Lame Sumati and Sadi, Lame de la Japchu, Madame Lamokorongi, Nibo Lamokorong, Wonchi, Wonchi Lamokoron, Zinje, Digi, Wonchi Tone, Coronia, Gaju to La Chania, Gamasia, and Shingi, Digi to Yalia, and Lega Masona, Lego Kugore, just a Lamigi and Sumati and Hadinet. And furthermore, the reason that um, great lamas are suitable to turn to for, for protect, protection is, is because the, the great uh, power or the great ability or the great capacity, it's all, all one Tibetan word, the great power or the great ability or the great capacity that, they, that, that abides on their continuum that they have accomplished within themselves. So they are therefore, through that great ability, a, or their great capacity, able to, to guide others in, the most, in, in, in a, a, the most skillful and appropriate of manners. They're able, able to guide others in the techniques to overcome suffering, to overcome problems, as well as for the accomplishment of virtue. So a way that we, one can relate to this, if we think of um, a, a great leader in, in a country, um, a great leader can, cannot um, in, in, enact everything on their own. They require the service of, of, of those with great talent and ability too, to fulfill um, their, their aims. So with, that's the kind of uh, uh, understanding we can use as to how we should relate to great lamas and why they are suitable to turn to for protection. <coughs> Or oh, maybe better than turn to for protection, turn to for assistance. Again, it's the same word, the word refuge. Turn for assistance. Then I don't think somebody there are your water and I'll somebody let you get tired. Somebody there are your water and I'll somebody think over it. Says I'm also somebody at the casting or a lamna. Tell you, I kept so to go on my conscious long. I do not know to come out, say, dig your chasm, kill on, do good, kill on, yes, and kept so to go on my dog your mother, some down your mother. だからね、なんとかね、ジャスガズ、ティングオレラな。オンアンズゲドボナザルね、オンアンアリアジカマディンキョロロボチロシエスカマディンエシチロシエスロボクヤヨロワ。なんとかんばけチャラキャオン。オ
not because we're seeing ourselves as objects of, of, of refuge and re-engaging in these great deeds for others, but rather that we are, are acting in a, some, as, as, as assistants to our, 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 our lamas, where we have the, um, where whatever ability that we have to help others with their, their day-to-day difficulties, whether they, they, they need help done through, through um, uh, pujas being performed or through advice being given, we can help them. And we help them as, as a, um, in a way that would be similar to a representative of our Lama or in really working through, um, I'm, I'm not saying it so well. Okay, so, we, um, so the way that we, would, we, we help them is not contrary to our refuge, Rather, we're acting under the, the guidance and the trainings that we have received from our lamas. And therefore, to the best of our ability, we will perform protective practices or incense offerings or some other puja or give advice. So we're not engaging in, in enlightened activities, but we are an assistant to those who are engaging in, light, in enlightened activities. So therefore, it is wholly appropriate to do um, practices such as these in order to, to help and assist others. The younger Benazogi, Benugola, Messo, Yagi, Lehu, or one, she's a Shungi, Rangi, Kolya, or the Chiron de Deux, Lera, do a mere barn, Chiron Robot, Campa Mason, Chiron George, Lera, Chevro Das, and Shungi, Cat Pombu Gangma, Cat, and Colonel Asha, Yuroa. She's an hour to give me a Gamat, Namsan Kolya, George, or Chiron Robot, Yeroches. Major Vena. Can imagine Dima Pombu, the Kuran Council, the Legacy at Nan, was here, and Dima Kuran Shevor Sigurwa. She's not Nanaji, a Kali, a Robotchi, a Shenda Pombu, the Kuran Council, the Robotchi, a Kang, not in a Tanji, Tama Inza, not Kuran Robotchi, and they call it Robotchi, a Mishushovorwa. On Dinaji, Suma said, Lama Goma, Nam Gibo, Tamba, the Kuran to give one chicky beach at Honey, then a Kuran to give me. ギョーダでにげねなぜよやだでにかがせやりゃ的ぎ Lame cut it, cut down, uncle and killing Jabber. I deny you, and the Messiah and the Pombo, Colonel Messiah, Lega Levores, and Pombo cut down, Colonel only Jiggins, killing Jin, and Rochigoro, and deny she, Lame cut down, eh, Cacueva, so Colonel de Jehoras, Lame Cacu, cut down, and Colonel Otani Jiggins, killing Jabber. Just a Dinian Zang, I'll to be so much here to get Trotile, Roba, Robo, do she to Trotile, Jeros Robo Chiro Chess, and then, uh, just two chenangs, okay. え、天上大家だ。そのてんせで、でねれまと、あの、そんばせ、ぺ、根性そんなし、三件なしだ。どんはだ、どんはせやで、できるや、茶さんに、かが茶さん、こん、そんばできせいで、す、ろで、し、
where we um, do, for example, protective practices for others, our role is, is similar to that. We would be doing so under the, um, the, 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 the guidance or through having received instruction or guidance from our spiritual teachers. And therefore, we, and then having accepted this, uh, the, this, uh, these spiritual instructions, we would act under the influence of our teachers through the guidance that they have given us. So therefore, when we engage in, for, for example, protective practices so as to dispel obstacles for others, it's not because we are engaging ourselves in some in, 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 in enlightened activities, but rather we are following the uh, spiritual instructions of, of, of our teachers and we are acting as their uh, representatives who have been given training and permission to perform these services to others and thereby we are in, in, engaging in activities that we have accepted to do so as to help fulfill the heartfelt wishes of our teachers which is to benefit others. So. That is, that, that is for that. And so then when one engages in activities for the benefit of others, such as protector uh, uh, practices, then one does so generating great faith in, in the three jewels, not as a competitor, but rather generating faith in them so as uh, uh, to, to, to draw on their strength, their, um, their, their uh, energy, their ability, and thereby as a representative perform the practice as well as we can to alleviate the suffering of others and thereby to help fulfill the heartfelt wishes of our teachers and the Buddhas. So with such a motivation, while uh, in engaging in, in uh, practices such as protective practices, we are not acting like as we have here a shaman or a fortune teller, but we are rather acting as a representative of the three jewels. <coughs> Jitin the <laughs> Make sure that this, the, the distinction is clear. We are not in, in um, uh, our refuge precepts uh, uh, instruct us not to turn for refuge to those who are uh, shamans or fortune tellers because it would harm our refuge in the three jewels. And this is because they um, do not have faith in the three jewels and they are not representatives of the three jewels. Whereas rather if we do turn towards, say, um, <coughs> those who are um, uh, Dharma protectors, this is appropriate because they are Arya beings and therefore as an Arya being are, uh, are uh, counted amongst the Sangha jewel. So therefore to turn towards them for, for refuge is appropriate. So if one engages, if, if one go, turns to a shaman or a fortune teller for help in our spiritual practice or help in our life, this is inappropriate. But if we turn towards the Dharma protectors, we make uh, supplications for um, encouragement to overcome our obstacles, for us to transform our, op our obstacles effectively. This is appropriate, and, and this is appropriate because this being, this Dharma protector, is an Arya being, and therefore is, a, a, is an illustration of the Sangha jewel. <coughs> That's why I'm not 
Tamdo the fifth point on page 23. According to your spiritual capacity, show others the significance of refuge in the three jewels. So the first part there. So here, when one has turned towards the, the, the three jewels with great sincerity, and the, the, the trust that we feel and the conviction that we feel uh, towards the three jewels is sincere within us, we then, we then also uh, ensure that we are engaging in the, tr the precepts or the trainings of the, th uh, the, of the three jewels effectively. And then we come to this fifth here, which now as a, a more skilled practitioner, to whatever extent we are skilled, or whatever is our spiritual capacity, to that extent, we must engage in activities to be of benefit to others. We must aid others, ease their suffering, be of benefit to them, and acting in accordance with the Buddha Dharma. This then is part of the meaning of here, show others the significance of refuge in the three jewels. Sangi <laughs> Tene
meditation that I'd encourage you to do on this topic is when you wake up in the morning and the first topic to reflect on in order to generate refuge is the sufferings of, 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 of samsara to the extent that one um, has experience in reflecting on the sufferings of samsara to that extent uh, fear to continue being bound in, 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 the cyclic, uh, in the cyclic existence will arise and from this fear, we th- with the arisal of this fear, with this, this desire not to continue to suffer, we then turn our mind towards the three jewels, reflecting on, on their, their qualities, to the point where we gain clarity that it's through relying on the three jewels that we can cultivate our soul spiritually, and thereby we can attain freedom from suffering. So this is how one, one goes for refuge. One first generates, uh, reflects on, on suffering, giving rise to this wish to be freed of suffering. So that's normally called the mind of fear. And then the second cause of refuge is the mind of faith. And this is where one reflects on the great qualities of the three jewels, gaining certainty that due to these, these incomparable qualities, through relying on the three jewels, I will be able to spiritually develop and thereby attain freedom from suffering and lasting peace. So that is the, mind, is the generation of the mind of refuge. And that alone is already a huge store of virtue accumulated in the morning. Then I'd encourage you to uh, reflect briefly on the training, so that you, by, if you meditate on them even briefly, that will help settle them in your mind, keep them in your mind. So in, to uh, summarize them a little bit now, part of those trainings are that we commit to hearing the teachings of the the Buddha and to reflecting on those teachings and then to meditate on them. So hear, reflect and meditate, all three. So now one commits to doing so, one is already doing so in one's daily practice, one has just done so uh, thus far in one's uh, morning meditation. And then one one, uh, continues in one's meditation accomplishing other others, other of the, the, the refuge precepts, such as, I commit today to guard my ethics. I always be uh, aware of my mind to ensure that it's not going in the direction of harm. If it's going in the direction of harm, that's contrary to a pre- to, to a refuge precept. And therefore, I will ensure I guard myself from harming others with my body, speech or mind, and in this way, I will guard my ethics. I will accomplish the ethical conduct of an ethical beha- physical behavior, ethical verbal behavior, and an ethical way of thinking. So here we have accomplished an ethical outlook, the mind of ethics, and that is the further precept accomplished. And then we can engage in uh, other virtuous activities which uh, uh, correspond to other uh, refuge precepts, such as uh, making offerings on our altar, or offering flowers, or, or reciting mantra, offering incense, doing circumambulation or prostrations, whatever one um, is naturally inclined to, whatever brings uh, joy to oneself. And then, but to summarize this in brief, the first commitment to make in terms of the trainings is not to bring harm to so the mind of ethics, and it's accomplishing, a, accompanying mind. It's not only do I commit not to add to the burden of sufferings that other, others experience, but I will actually help them. And I'll do so primarily by guarding my mind and showing it's in a virtuous direction. And, there, and then expressing this virtuous mind towards others through my physical activity and my uh, way of speaking. And in this way, I will ease the suffering of others and I will help them as much as I can. So this is a brief meditation that can be done and done easily and it, and it fulfills our refuge precepts very well and develops great stores of virtue and strengthens our virtuous minds and turns us away from non-virtue. So therefore this is important to do um, repeatedly over a sustained period. And what I'd also encourage you to do is when I, I guided you through a meditation tonight reflecting on the kindness of, of, of others, and here we spoke about being able to come together here and accumulate virtue, and we went back through the entire lineage from Lama Zopad, Lama Yeshi, right back, His Holiness, to Buddha Shakyamuni himself, and then the being who was still to become Buddha Shakyamuni. If you reflect like that, that too, reflecting on the kindness of Buddha Shakyamuni as well as earlier on the qualities of Buddha Shakyamuni, 
will strengthen your refuge. And then also to do the same meditation on the qualities and kindness of your Lama, that too will strengthen your refuge. So that is the way that I encourage you to engage in this, this meditation every day. Okay. So thank you, then we'll finish here tonight, and we'll continue from here next week. Thank you. <laughs>